Is the world a violent place? Almost certainly yes. A position reinforced by the images that flash daily onto our TV and computer screens from around the world. But is it a lot less violent than it was, despite the oft repeated assertion that the 20th century was the bloodiest in history? The eminent psychologist Stephen Pinker argues in his new book, The Better Angels of Nature, after a phrase by Abraham Lincoln, that despite world wars, civil wars, invasions and long-running conflicts, a range of cultural, social and scientific changes, literacy, travel and the rise of empathy and reason have ensured that the world has become a less violent place. Uh, Stephen Pinker, um, first of all, do people regard uh, or recoil from violence more now because of a uh, philosophical issue or simply because of pr pragmatic issues? For example, you know, if somebody was to let off a nuclear bomb, a lot of us would not be here anymore. Is it pragmatism or actually philosophical? I think it's some of each, but I think the theory that we owe the peace of the last six decades to the nuclear bomb, the extreme version being the idea that the nuclear bomb should be given the Nobel Peace Prize, mm. uh, I, I think is wrong. That for one thing, there was plenty of memory from World War II that good old fashioned tanks and artillery and aerial bombardment could already do so much damage mm. that no one wanted a rematch anytime soon. But also, because the nuclear bomb is so really useless as a, as a uh, tactic in war, other than deterring all-out annihilation, mm. that it had almost been taken off the table as a live option, which is why so often in the last few decades, a non-nuclear power has defied a nuclear one. Argentina and the Falklands being mm. a perfect example, they knew that Britain wasn't going to retaliate with a nuclear strike on Buenos Aires. But is part of the reason that um, people are less predisposed to violence is that we're a much more interconnected world and it's not faceless masses that are being mown down? I think very much so. I think it's not a coincidence that the humanitarian reforms of the Enlightenment, such as the abolition mm. of slavery, the abolition of barbaric practices like disemboweling and breaking on the wheel came on after a century of an enormous expansion of literacy, book publishing, communication, travel, cosmopolitan cities, that a lot of the advances of the last 60 years, the civil rights revolution, the women's rights revolution, the avoidance of war by great powers occurred during the, the electronic global village. It's hard to extol the beauty and nobility of war, as people used to do, when you have images, say, of a naked girl running from a, a napalm attack and the reality of war is brought home to you. And you're more in the habit of seeing other people, uh, seeing the world from other people's points of view, imagining what it's like to be someone else by reading their words, by reading history, by reading memoir. But that's interesting because that doesn't, uh, that would not necessarily um, be the case when it comes to, for example, war in the Balkans, where you know, recently people were seeing their neighbors, people that had been, and also in Kosovo, people that had been their neighbors, they were mowing them down. There was a, there was a, a, a senseless violence. There was a terrible genocidal violence. That in itself hasn't, it may be more compartmentalized, but it, it, there's been no improvement in human nature, has there? I don't think there's been an improvement in human nature. I think we're born as violent as we all, always have been, but there has been an improvement in which aspects of human nature are engaged by our world. I think human nature comprises a lot of ugly motives like revenge, like tribalism, but also motives like self-control and empathy and reason. So it's a question of which of those components of human nature, the better angels or the, the inner demons, gets engaged by the world that we live in. But also take, uh, on a wider issue of violence and war, just we've been talking obviously about the economy tonight. I mean, do you, you seem to say in your book that we generally are um, unjustifiably unpessimistic. We're much <laughs> more glass half empty than glass half full and that's not justified. Uh, well, that's right. We, that, at the very least, we should show some gratitude for the things that we've done right, uh, while not taking our eye off the things we're still doing wrong. But the view of the world that you get from journalism is bound to be biased, because there's certainly always enough violence to fill the evening news, and that's what news consists mm. of. It's things, things that go bang. It's people who get hurt. When you have millions of people dying peacefully from Alzheimer's disease and cancer and heart attacks, there aren't camera crews filming their deaths, and so your impression of how violent the world is can be distorted if it's driven simply by horrific images on the news. But you seem to suggest there are actually reasons to be cheerful rather than just simply reasons not to be unhappy. Yes, there's, uh, for, uh, among other things, the threat of global thermonuclear annihilation has been taken uh, away, which was what many of us grew up with. We, in, in a modern society, have uh, perhaps a, a 30th the chance of being murdered as our medieval ancestors. 
women and racial minorities and gay people no longer have to threat violence in the home and in, and in the streets. Uh, and we've abolished barbaric practices like human sacrifice, like debtors' prisons. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen Pingo. At least we've got no more human sacrifice.